Hi folks, here is a quick video on how to use the statistics functions of another popular calculator for this class. Um, this is the TI-30X2S. Um, the S just stands for solar, so if you have a battery operated version, it works the same way. So I'm going to show you how to get into stat mode with this one and how to enter um, your data and get all of the good stuff out that you'll need for your class. So I've got a set of data entered over here. We have an X variable with a seven, a five, a five, a six, and so on all the way down. The beauty of using a stat calculator is once we enter those numbers into the calculator, it will do all of those means and standard deviations and sums of X's and, and so on and so forth um, that we need. So for this particular cal calculator, all of the stat functions, well, the stat functions are in a mixture of the main function buttons as well as the second level, these purple buttons on my calculator. So to go in the stat mode, we need to use that purple stat button. So that involves hitting the second key and then hitting the data button where that purple stat is. And then it asks me, do you want to do one variable statistics or two variable statistics? Um, for almost everything we're doing in this class is one variable, except for uh, one chapter, we would do two variable statistics. So the one variable is fine, but I want to draw your attention to um, these cursor keys over here. If I hit the left key, it will cycle over to one more choice that says clear data. If I've used the stat function in the past, it's always a good idea to clear the data. Otherwise, it's still in the memory and you'll just be adding to it. So I'm just going to hit the enter button down here to make sure that all my um, any previous data was cleared um, and then hit one variable, my enter key. OK, now notice we are in stat mode. So to start entering data, we're just going to hit the data key data and notice it's saying put in the first x variable and that's a seven now the uh, interesting thing about this particular calculator is we um, navigate using the cursor key so i'm going to hit the down arrow and the down arrow says frequency of one i could just down arrow again and enter the next um, value but there happens to be two sevens in this data set so i can enter a two for frequency and it automatically puts those two in. So I, it just saves a little bit of time. Now I hit the down arrow and it asks for the next score. Well, the next score is a five, and I hit the down arrow. Once again, frequency of one, but there's one, two, three, four fives in this data set. So I'm gonna change that to a four and hit down arrow. Now we're at the um, third, which is a six. There's only one six in this data set, so I can just hit down arrow and down arrow. Then a three, there happens to be one, two threes, so I'm going to down arrow and hit a frequency of two. Um, we've already entered the sevens. Oh, wait, I have to enter the two. Ha <laughs> ha. Down arrow. Then we hit the two, and there's only one two in this data set. And the only thing that's left is I haven't entered a four. There's just one four, so frequency of one. Now that all the data are entered, I can just hit the stat ver button. The stat ver button does all of the calculations. Notice it says N, and the N is 11, and there are in fact 11 numbers in my data set. Using the cursor keys, I can move over. That's an X bar, which means the mean. The mean for this data set is 4.73 with rounding. Going over again, we have S sub X. So in statistics, a lowercase s, and oftentimes you'll see that, that little x, um, little x there, is the standard deviation for a sample. So if I cursor over to that, we see the sample standard deviation dividing by n minus 1 is 1.62. If I go again, we see the baseball cap. That's standard deviation for a population. So we just divide by n instead of n minus 1, and we get 1.54. Now I can keep going, and here is the sum of x which was 52, that was just adding up all 11 scores. And the sum of x squared 
which is 272. That's if we squared each number and then added them up. So 49 plus 25 plus 25 plus 36 and so on, 272. So now we have, you know, any and all of the scores that we want. We even know the population, right? Uh, excuse me, we even know the standard deviation. Let's just say if it was a sample, we'd know it was 1.62. Uh, 1.62. Now let me show you how if you need to show your work for an assignment we have the formula for the standard deviation is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n all over n minus 1 because I said this was for a sample and take the square root. So the calculator gave us, I'll show you again, Sum of x squared, which is 272, so I'll put that in, minus the sum of x, which was 52, which we have to remember to square, and divide by n, which is 11, divide by 11 minus 1, and take the square root. So 52, if I were to square that, is 2,704 divided by 11, is 245.82. So I have 272 minus 245.8, oops, 82. That's the top half here, okay? Um, so um, I'll just do it this way, just clear this. All right, so we have 272 minus 245.82, and we get 26.18, that is our sum of squares, the top half of the formula, divided by 10. So divide by 10, and then we take the square root of that of 2.618, 2.618 equals 1.62 with rounding. And that's exactly what we wrote down. Oops, there we go. 1.62 um, is exactly what we wrote down when we looked at the stat function. Uh, once again, go to my stat variables and sample standard deviation, 1.61 with rounding. Okay, so I hope that was helpful um, and get used to using the stat function of your calculator. It will save you a lot of time.